I've seen these hoppies for a while and I've been wondered about them because I've got power meters which I do development work with and uh, I'm just wondering how good the hoppy is. One came up for sale Black Friday so I, I bought it and uh, here it is anyway so it's in a box don't know what that means that's Chinese you can translate it if you want but I noticed that first of all there's an HP8 an HPAE 9800 which is 4500 watts so that's the lower resolution version I guess um, but it still says energy saving energy saving lamps tester so <laughs> If you've got any 4,500 watt energy saving lamps, you must be running a football stadium or something. But, um, so I'd rather, I didn't realise at the time, but I'd rather have bought the 8713, which is a 0.01 watt up to what I don't know. We'll find out maybe, we'll load this up and see how fast this one, well this one will go to 4,500. So there might be a spec for that, we'll have a look at that. So if you're going to buy one of these, then select the one you want, because there are two, but it's not advertised what they're for, because it says this, an energy saving lamps tester. And clearly you won't use that one to test energy saving lamp because the resolution may not be good enough but we'll find out in a moment because I say we can compare the readings that this gives us on a set um, voltage and load compared to the Yokogawa um, power meter this one um, which is the de facto standard whenever you buy a piece of kit that's been tested it's got a power performance and it's been calibrated it's usually a WT Yokogawa that is the instrument that's used to calibrate the other instruments. It is the standard and they make the best power meters for a price. It's about three and a half thousand pounds I think, nearly three thousand pounds this one. All right. So yeah we'll compare the readings between the Yokogawa which I truly believe it's been calibrated this year or last year. Last year it's calibrated and I use this to develop power supplies because you have to have accurate measurements of the actual power supply, standby current and efficiency and power factors to comply with international standards for various countries, all right, so that's why it's needed. So it's an interesting opportunity to test the old hoppy. Um, it, uh, I'll just look in the box, here's the hoppy, I've taken the hoppy out of the box already, that's what you get in the box, you get a couple of bulb holders. So you get uh, GU10, you get the ES15 or 12, the small Edison screw, and you get the larger Edison screw, with an American style two pole plug on the end which plugs in the front of the hobby all right so I don't think I didn't get a BNC English whatever they're called adapters unless that comes out of there no it doesn't um, and what else do you get you get a USB lead and you get a thing for testing uh, a lead for going on the end of the uh, replacement LED mains powered uh, Tube lights, right? Tubular, tubular lights. Right, in addition to testing this, so that's the box what you get. As I say, I bought the wrong one, I think. I think had I realised there were two models, I would have got the more sensitive one with the lower range because let's face it, how often do we have to che check for four and a half kilowatts? Not very often. Still got the plastic uh, film on the front. Um, yeah, so this is the Hoppy and it's got this funny T, whatever that means, and this is the 9800, goes up to 20 amps. Of course you can't get 20 amps into it. Hopefully the mains plug it came with at the moment has got a 3 amp in it. I think <laughs> someone's obviously blown the fuse and the fuse holders have got a 3 amp but it's a moulded plug 13 amps so it will only go up 13 amps because you, unless you wire this into a 20 amp supply but I advise you not to and, unless you check the, the gauge of that cable. Mind you it does feel pretty, pretty uh, it feels like 13 amp mains cable actually. So you probably, did it say 15 amps? 20 amps, yeah you wouldn't want to pull 20 amps through this cable not a mains voltage. So anyway, you stick to this and the fuse will blow, provided it's not a Chinese fuse and it's a safe, um, approved, properly uh, regulated fuse. So where this plugs in? This plugs into a breakout box, this thing, which is connected to the power meter up there. Um, and so all the power coming through this box, out through this socket, goes through the power meter. So the power meter will measure the, the actual current voltage, power factor, and all the other factors coming out through that socket supplying whatever load we plug into it okay obviously the hoppy will plug into there so we have to plug the hoppy directly into a main supply because otherwise if we measure it from this point we plug it into the same mains if we measure from there we'll also be taking reading the current and the power that's consumed by the hoppy so you get a wrong reading so what we have got is a um, what we have got for testing power supplies UK mains goes up and down all over the place when I was a boy, not long ago actually, the UK mains was 
24 volts, uh, sorry, 24 volts, 240 volts at 50 hertz. And it was plus or minus 6% or plus, yeah, plus or minus 6%. What they've done is changed it to 230 volts plus 6% minus 10. So it's got to be within plus 6% of 230 volts, which is about 245. Uh, or minus 10 would be 215, 205 or something like that. Anyway, so that's the UK main spec. It was supposed to bring it in line with Europe. It does give problems on other products. But this comes from a clean power is electronic box, which uh, provides sinusoidal clean mains, because as you know, the mains is all sorts of shapes and waveforms and distortion uh, caused by non-linear loads on the grid all over the place. And it's basically sinusoidal. But for the purposes of making accuracy, accurate standby measurements, then the actual waveform, the purity of the sinusoidal waveform could vary and it'll affect the results. So we've got a clean AC power supply, which is controlled by an interface on my computer, this one. You can see you can move the things around, you can set the frequency and the voltage and everything else. Um, and the actual physical box which is this is controlling which is outputting the mains is this box down here which is a clean AC power source and that allows me to run the power supplies at all sorts of voltages. I can do a surge up to 320 volts, I can change the frequency slightly, I can output distorted mains waveforms and I can do inrush currents by switching on at 90 degrees phase, so maximum inrush current measurements and that sort of thing. So you can't really do any reasonable measurements, stable measurements, because the mains is fluctuating all over the place most of the time, so you're just chasing, you'll have to take a load of re readings and average them, and there's no guarantee the mains voltage won't change or the waveform might change before you plug in and, and, and make modifications. So we need this as a standard. So that's connected to the, uh, to the power uh, uh, supply, uh, clean AC power supply, right? So that's that. So now if we just um, turn the power supply on, Here's the application that controls the clean AC power source, and you can see you can set the voltage RMS, you can set the frequency, you can go up to 500 hertz. You can switch, or you can set the on phase. That's the phase angle of the current or the voltage actually at, at the point when you turn on. So clearly, you would set it to 90 to get the maximum inrush current, and the off degrees is when you turn off. So it will turn off at zero. So zero, it will turn off at the zero point. Sometimes when you turn equipment off various phases it can interfere or upset the actual system so it's for testing all right so anyways we've got it set to let's set it to 230 uh, 50 Hertz will turn on zero we're not doing that sort of measurement today set those things and you can see when I turn this on you hear a click and you see the uh, the voltage re registering on the uh, on the Yokogawa, okay, when, the, when it's plugged in. So I can turn the power on and off and by the software, and this does have also have a logging uh, sequence and the logging tool, and we can see. And if I reset it now, there we go. Here's the window for the logging, and then I say record. You can see it's recording the voltage and the current and the power. I mean, this has got power and um, other measurements on it, um, but it's just not accurate enough for a, a realistic test. It's within maybe 0.5%, but it's no good for uh, precision work, all right? So you can see, um, if I just go back and turn on the power, anyway, we don't need that for today. We'll take the me measurements from the Yokogawa. All right, so that's the AC power source described. Um, as I say, it's coming from this box down there. Okay, well, let's plug her in and see what happens. So, uh, plug in the clean AC power to the WT210. Actually, no, let's check the hoppy first. We'll plug the hoppy directly into the, do you spot my deliberate mistake there? Right, here we go. So the hoppy was on, I'll just reach over the PC and switch the power on to her. And there's the power, okay, so. Hoppy should be running. Okay. So I'm set to 220. Hoppy says 219.6. Question is, who is right? We'll find out who's right when we um, 
we plug the Yokogawa in because that's accurate to within, within 0.05% on RMS voltages. All right, so we'll tell. So we're 219.5. Let's put these on a spreadsheet actually, then we can. Uh, don't have to rely on my lousy memory then. So I could wire it up to the automatic test, but I, you know what? I haven't got time. So uh, Hoppy 219.6. Yeah, if you plug that into the mains right now, you would see it going all over the place basically. 2195, no load, right? So let's plot a load on. So <clears throat> what I've got is these um these cheap light light bulbs from the pound shop, believe it or not. They're quite nice. So they're big long inefficient. They're really heating bulbs rather than light bulbs. They say they give off light. They're shockingly inefficient as far as a, a light bulb is concerned, but as long as they look nice, who cares if they kill the planet, eh? So screw her in there and she should light up with a bit of luck. Okay, so the voltage has dropped by 0.1. This is billed as a energy E bulb, <laughs> which it is. If there was a G and H and J or Z, it would be down here somewhere. It really is quite the pits. Um, not suitable for household room illumination, it says. 120 lumens. Do you believe that? I don't believe that. I don't think that's 120. We could test it with a photo radiometer in a minute if I have time. Yeah, so it's a 40 watt T30, right? So 40 watts, and we're taking, according to the Hoppy, 33.74 watts. So let's write that down. 40 watt bulb, and it's 219.5, 219.5, amps. I presume that must be RMS. Obviously 50 hertz, power factor of 1.000, which it is because it's just literally a resistor. There's no reactive load, there's no capacitor or inductance to speak of, certainly at mains frequencies that need to be taken into account. So that's good. Um, nothing alarming so far, eh? Um, and what have we got? We've got annual power con consumption, 1,108 kilowatt hours. And at the current price, that would cost you 1108 times about 17, 16p, isn't it? 0.16. So if you had this switched on 24-7 in your house, it would cost you within about £177 to run that light bulb 24-7. Quite a lot, isn't it, when you think about it? So clean AC is coming in, coming at 2.9.5. You can see it's nice and stable. We've got power 33.7. 33.73, 33.73, there we go, that's the 40 watt light bulb, right, okay, now um, what I'll do in a minute is I'll plug it into the mains and you can see how the mains is wanging up all the time, up and down all the time, you can just see, I'll demonstrate that in a bit so you can see just how unstable the mains really is, well, it would be wouldn't it with people switching kettles and stuff and we're all at the end of cables and it all gets affected in a nasty way, right. So there we are. So that's that bulb. So that's just a resistive light bulb, uh, non-reactive uh, light bulb. Okay. Oh, I haven't got another light bulb because all my light bulbs are safety bayonet fittings. I think. Let me just pause a minute and I'll go and find some more victims for the hop. Right. Here's an interesting one. I bought this to go in the light outside the front door, but guess what? <laughs> it's too big. Look, I can't get my hands right round it. God, bigger than our dog's neck, I think. Yeah, so let's put that one in. That's going to be interesting because I don't see there's any real space for any electronics in there. So it should be interesting to see what this gives us. It should give us an extreme power factor, I predict. That's if it's working. There she goes. So she's lit up. Let's move out of the way, otherwise it's going to dazzle you boys. You can see it's working. You can see the warm glow that makes you feel very happy. Actually, Christ, it is bright. Put the box on top. If that's six watts, that's quite bright. So what power we got now? We've got uh, ah, you can see now the difference. We got two nineteen point six again. Got six point one five six, so it's six point one six. So it's six point one six, and we've got got point oh four eight current, eight milliamps basically. Got a power factor, terrible power factor, point five seven seven. Yeah, well, we won't bother with the annual consumption. So that's that one. Okay, so we're going to compare that. That's the sixty watt globe. Unscrew her. Ooh. Actually, it's a bit of a designer. It's got a huge globe, but those filaments really need to be twice as long to make it into a feature and a lot dimmer. I guess you could dim it. It's 
a bit of a flickery bulb actually, I don't think there's any um, sort of regulation of the or smoothing of the actual AC waveform, the actual LEDs are switching on and off a hundred times a second along with the um, bridge rectified mains. Uh, right, so what have we got? I haven't got anything else to plug in. I'm going to be back again in a minute. Now I'll move it a bit closer so you can see better what's going on. But yeah, I've got one of these old IKEA. Um, these are the old cold cathode fluorescents with a power supply in the base from IKEA, which were bought about. These are these are pretty new actually. I took them all out of service when I got grade to LED, so they're all working. But it is an interesting case in point because look at this. You'll fire up. There you go. So it's, it's actually not that bright here. That's um, nowhere near as bright as that last six watt bulb that uh, I had to cover up. But we've got. Oh look at that. <laughs> See how its exposure on the camera changes. It starts to beat with the um, multiplexing of the hoppy display. I'm going to film that hoppy display in high speed and show it to you because you might find it interesting on how it works. You might not. But um, it's to do with serial multiplexing and to allow less data lines to control the same display and also saves electronics. But it's nowhere near, trust me, it's nowhere near as bright. So I'm going to put it out of the way so you can see the display better. Interesting, it's like flickering a bit more. I haven't noticed that flickering so much before. Maybe it was because we weren't uh, zoomed in so far. So you've got 6.391 watts, 6.391, 6.391, and I don't know, 6.43, it's changing, isn't it? She's warming up, boys. You see it going up, 6.465, it's warming up. Heat's getting into the electronics and the gas and the tube's warming up and the conductivity's changing. So I'm going to log that in at 6.5 after a minute, okay, so 6.500 and it's been about a minute. Alright, so we'll compare it to that. And I'm just wondering what it's going to go up to now. And power factor of 0.604, so again an appalling power factor, but slightly better than the straightforward LED, rectified mains straight into an LED. Right, so that's this horrible thing, and it's gone up to, it's still creeping up. It's getting brighter actually. Look at that, it's actually getting brighter. So this is one of those old bulbs that used to, so you turn them on, and by the time you got your pyjamas on and stumbled around the room, you could actually see well enough to go back and switch the light off in the bedroom. So it's like a, <coughs> a wake-up light. Anyway, I reckon it's going to get up to 7 watts at some stage. I'm curious now. I'm going to leave that running for a bit, go and make a cup of tea, and we'll cut back in and see what she's worked herself up to. So yeah, a cup of tea's here. Um, she's got up to 6.63 watts and it's rated at, uh, you can read that, uh, 0.061 amps, so it's pretty close to the ampage, 0.050 amps, so it's taking less current than, than uh, advertised, but it does say it's a 7 watt, so 7 watt, 50, 60 hertz. That's that one. So they do warm up, actually it's getting pretty warm now, and it is quite a bit brighter but still not as efficient as the modern LED bulb, so let's take that one out. Oh, I've just found this in the shed, brand new 25 watt corn of the cob bulb, lead corn bulb, 85 to 285, 265 volts, so that's universal input, impressive. So let's just put her in there, this is going to be bright I think boys, well yeah, that is bright. That is quite bright. Are they all working? Yeah, we've got a complete array of LEDs all powered up there. Oh, one's on the end as well. I don't know how many LEDs there are, but there's a fair number. So let's stick that, stick that in a box. Otherwise we will blind ourselves. And um, what's she pulling? So corn bulb is running at 20.79 watts. 73, 72, it's going down as it warms up. Okay, well I'll, I'll wait a minute and put that reading in and power factor of 0.513 again, which is pretty appalling. 513. Um, yeah, so let's um, switch over to the Yokogawa and just uh, see how these readings match up. But this may be a very good, very cheap meter, we'll find out. Okay, so now the socket is now connected to the clean AC power source, um, still running at 220 volts at 50 hertz via the precision. Yokogawa WT power meter up there and at the moment it's reading the uh, voltage 219.97 Hoppy said 219.5 so the voltage is out on the Hoppy uh, it is 50 Hertz look it's within 2 millihertz of 50 Hertz 
and the hoppy said it was 49.7 49.9 so the frequency on the hoppy is not far out okay what do you expect for a very cheap thing you know, considering the hoppy costs 50 50 pounds and this costs about 3000 pounds so that's the difference so if i just whack this this um this bulb in that's the first one we tested and we'll f this is going to stay the same and that's going to stay the same the voltage and the frequency so we'll just set that to uh, power factor and the current Ooh. I've overshot as usual. Milliamps, alright, okay. So on this bulb we've got 34 watts, Hoppy said 33.73, got power factor of 1.000, which is the same as the Hoppy, and we've got 154.7 milliamps on this one, and the Hoppy actually said it was 153 milliamps. So 0.153, so it's um yeah, it's a couple of percent out on the current as well, but not bad, eh, for a cheap box. So let's try the other one. Next one we tried with is this great big ugly thing. Swim that one in. Ooh, that's bright. Let's shove that over there. Oops, it's gone out. Alright, so um, we've got 6.2 watts. The Hoppy said 6.5 watts. Uh, we've got uh, 0.57 power factor. Hoppy, Hoppy said 0.604. So that's out. And we had... Uh, 49.18 milliamps and the hoppy said 48 milliamps so the hoppy is under reading on current and under reading on power as well but it's close I'll do the percentage how far it's out at the end all right for you so then we put in this one with an adapter done it right so this is going to be a bit of a, an odd reading this one because we could wait for it to warm up but it's an anomaly isn't it um, so we've got 5.9 watts and when we turned it on the hoppy said it was 6.5 watts it's a 7 watt bulb remember it goes up to 7 watt at the end so we've got 6.5 got a much lower reading even though it was climbing it's still reading lower um, than it was running at when it was fully warmed up so I'm guessing to make any sensible reading of this thing, I'm going to have to let it warm up. So I'm just going to go and do something and I'll be back. Well, she's still climbing. Um, I think this is an anomalous reading because it's not stable enough low to actually be able to check the accuracy of the the, uh, the hoppy, which uh, is what we're here for. So let's go straight onto the old corn bulb. Stuff the corn bulb in. Don't waste your time. And we've got a nice bright illumination, the same, same voltage and frequency. We've got 21.07 watts. The hoppy said it was 20.7. So again, the hoppy is slightly under reading. 20.9. 789. It's actually fluctuating a bit. It can't be the power meter or the AC source. That's the actual bulb doing something. Some instability in the power supply of the bulb. So let's call that 20.6, shall we? And then we'll call the current... Uh, 0 0.185, 185 milliamps, and we'll put the power factor down as 0.5. Yeah, Hoppy said the power factor on that one was 0.513, so it's under reading on the power factor. So I'll just uh, crunch up those numbers, and then you can uh, we can decide whether a Hoppy is a good bit of kit or not. Well, the jury is back, and these are the results. So you've got power, current, and power factor. The Hoppy, the Oko, Gawa Rido for the current and the, the power the current and the power factor the voltage and the current were the same the actual i did a another measurement of the hoppy and at 220 volt setting on the eight on the regulated ac power source you got 219.5 i got 219.98 on the yoko so you got 0.2 percent error now the 40 watt filament just a purely resistive load gave you an error of minus 1.09 percent so under red the globe minus 4.5 percent on the globe board, uh, uh, bulb and that's because it's I'm just going to double check that to make sure that's just not an erroneous unfair reading um, ah, back again yeah I checked it and this is right and the reason it's like that is the globe light has no electronics inside it's got a bridge rectifier and the diodes and what you're getting is a very high crest factor so the current is only be conducted in a very small area of the um, waveform literally where the LEDs are conducting 
Yeah, I can show you that. I'll show you that um, crest factor thing on that bulb in a minute. I'll just do some waveforms for you. It won't take a moment. It's just worth doing because it's a, an interesting thing. So yeah, you've got a bad error there, four point, minus 4.5. So on high crest factor loads, the hoppy is pretty inaccurate. But the rest of the time, look at these accuracies. They're quite good. Current is within 2%. Um, again, the globe upset it because of the crest factor on the RMS conversion for the current is wrong. So very highly reactive loads. You've got a problem with the hoppy. It's not very accurate. And then again with the power factor, it's not bad actually. I mean, do you really need to know it better than that? No, not really. So again, it gives you a very indication of the current the performance of the unit. So we've been through these before. The voltage and the frequency readings at 1560 hertz are okay. They're in the ballpark, right? So the worst thing is here. And I'll just um, rig up a power supply. Uh, connected to the scope so you can see the current waveform. You'll see what I, I'm talking about with regard to the uh, current uh, crest factor. So you've got now you've got a five percent accuracy on a power factor of 0.563, and you can see um, the corn wasn't as bad because they've got universal input and a power supply inside. So I'll just demonstrate to that, and that's the end of the video really. So the conclusion would be that the hop is pretty good unless you've got very high crest factor. Yeah, so what we've got here, I've set it up so you can have a look at this uh, crest factor issue. What we've got is a Variac. This is the variable tap transformer going into a that's AC mains. AC mains there, live and neutral couple through this transformer and then the same number of windings on those two as each other it's just an isolation transformer and then coming out of the isolation transformer we've got a isolated from mains we call this AC low volt shall we and we can put the scope probe there so we can put that to ground stick our scope probe on there and then we can have our bulb test socket there And then down from the test socket to ground, there is a 10 ohm resistor. So we've got one, one scope probe on there, which is current. And one, one scope on here, scope probe on there, which is the voltage reading on the scope. So you'll see the current. So when the current flows through the bulb, the bulb will be plugged into this socket here. Or out of the way. There's our bulb. Okay, so the current will throw through the bulb filament or lighting filament or LEDs through the uh, 10 ohm resistor to the ground to the 0 volts. And then our scope will pick up the voltage here, which is obviously voltage is the cause of current flow. So the higher the current, the more the voltage. So we can that will give us our current readout, and this will give our voltage readout. So we can see the relationship between voltage and current. Okay, so that's what I've got. Sorry about that scrappy diagram. But this is what I've got uh, on the desk in all this lot, all hooked together. You can see it's all hooked together. There's clips culminating in the bulb holder. All right. So if we just have a look at what's going on on the screen, on the scope. So yeah, zoom in slightly, you can see the scope. So you can see you've got a pretty rough looking sine wave. You can see this is actually running off the mains now but via the isolation transformer. And you can see all this um, switch mode power supply stuff in this office is clipping the top. So it's more of a, it's actually third harmonic. The triangular shape of that with no curves is like third harmonic. All the third harmonics added together would give you a triangular wave, okay? So the bottom one is the voltage, and the top one is the current. And we could work it out from the resistance and the peak voltage what the RMS current is, but we won't bother with that. So you can see at the moment, if I superimpose the two, power factor of one everything is sitting on top of everything else okay so you've got a symmetrical obviously the range is slightly if I check if I vary the gain slightly they would match up okay so yellow current blue voltage I think if I disconnect the channel one that yellow one should disappear and the other and the voltage is there yes yeah, so I've got that around the right way right so I've got the current and the voltage we're on the bulb as you can see so the bulb there's a resistor, current and voltage are in phase. 
power factor of 1. Right, so if I take this one out, you can see the, the current has gone. And we'll put in our big globy bulb, this thing. Okay, so now look at it there. You can see if I did, because it's um, a low, look at the noise on that thing. Any guesses what that noise is? But now you can see the, for most part of the, if I just superimpose the two again, once again, you can see for most part of the actual sine wave, there is no current flowing. And you can actually see the extra distortion that this has introduced into the system when it starts to conduct. Can you see that? So the, if I take that, you can see the blue wave is vaguely sinusoidal, but with a lot of um, third ang third third odd harmonics on it and when I put that in there you can see the blue sh the blue wave shape changes shape and also we have um, the current only flowing for a short period during the actual cycle all right so and you're guessing what that noise is on there see that what do you think that is it is curious. It's uh, noise going around the ground loop, I should think, because I'm grounding. It's on the 0 volt rail here. I'm grounding. It's the coupling between this and all the switch mode power supplies in the system, I think. So anyway, you can see. Yeah. So the crest factor is the actual peak uh, peak value versus the average effective value. In this case, the average effective value of the current would be um, down here somewhere it's this whole peak averaged out over that whole range so it would be down here somewhere so this has got a crest factor of three or four to one so the crest factor of four the peak the peak current is four times roughly the RMS current because it, all this peak the energy that's just delayed um, delivered in this peak is delivered over here of course the crest factor of the power would be the same thing um, so the peak power is about four times the average power and that's where this inaccuracy on the, top, the hoppy is coming in it doesn't like waveforms which have a high crest factor otherwise it's okay should we have a look at some of the other um, devices we plugged in and see what they do for us how about the corn, corn bowls going to be obviously much higher current so I turn the current down Whoa. <laughs> look at that look what the corn bowl does to the bowl <laughs> the corn bowl does to the sine wave that is gnarly, isn't it? Isn't that gnarly? <laughs> yeah, because it's coming from the transformer. The the uh, resonance of the capacitance of the input of this thing and the transformer have formed a kind of um, resonance circuit. And you can see it's done a horrible thing to the sine wave. This is just the voltage coming out of the secondary of that transformer. Um, and again, you can see here and here it's not conducting at all. This is where the 0 0.5, 0 0.6 power factor comes in. And obviously the power factor isn't related to the crest factor. Uh, the power factor is just the uh, real power over the imaginary power, um, which is the volt amps, the product of volts and the amps at all points. And then the crest factor is the height of the peak uh, peak power uh, divided by the average effective RMS power. So that's the corn bowl. So look at this one. I could scroll that, <laughs> scroll that and going in there. It's good wine I'm be having though tonight. Oh, how about this thing? Let's see what that does for us. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, she's not firing up, is she? I'm going to turn the voltage up a bit. Here's you going to go. Here's Wally. All right, let's turn that down a bit. Oh, that's the frequency. Wrong one. Yeah, so that's a much kinder peak, isn't it? There's lots less noise and harmonics on there. Look how much cleaner that is there. I think the bulb's doing its thing. It's warming up, getting ready to provide some light at some point soon. And you can see on this one, the current is actually leading the... It's a reactive current because the peak in the current is well in front of the peak of the uh, of the voltage. So we've got a capacitive load there. So the, the uh, waveform is leading. There's a... What's this one? 40 watt. Again, you can see 
we got a crest factor of uh, 1.4, won't it? Is that right on power? You got the RMS is the the RMS is one, is uh, um, the peak over route too. Yeah, so this one's got a crest factor of 1.4 or something like that. But you can see it again. It's just a resisted bulb. It's all in phase. So I don't think we've got anything else we can try on this to demonstrate that crest factor. But you can see the um, from from this just how ugly the mains waste forms are, and the and the uglier they get, the worse it is for the power grid for reasons of dissipation in the wiring because peak current and peak voltages. Um, distort the waveform and also you get recirculating currents, particularly third harmonic currents in transformers and in windings and wires between you and the substation which isn't delivering any power, you're not paying for that power because you're not using that power but the current that delivers the peaky power to your door is still flowing in the wires therefore heat has been dissipated in the cabling and the transform the substation has to be bigger as well to cope with less power because in domestic situations you just you just um, pay for the real power that you consume whereas most commercial sites actually pay for the KBA which is the product of the volts and the amps so if you've got um, one KBA being drawn if you've got a one KBA load which has got a power factor of 0.5 then the actual real power being dissipated in the load is 500 watts and in a house you'd be paying 500 watts of power on your power meter because houses and domestic electricity is only charged at the rate of you use real power. So if you had a 1 kVA, kVA load uh, with a power factor of 0.5 in a factory you'd be paying for the full 1 kilowatt not just for the 0.5 real watts, uh, uh, 0.5 kilowatts, 500 watts that your load is taking okay your load is consuming so you can see that on these big industrial situations they want to actually reduce the amount of current flowing in the wiring back to the substation and the power station and therefore they need to get people to minimize KVA rating. So in industrial situations you'll have power factor correction which will try and bring the power factor of the site as close to one as possible because with unity power factor it's the cheapest situation for paying for power if you're a commercial user. There is some talk about domestic uh, situations being charged on KVA instead of real power which would be terrible because all these terrible light bulbs and things and the um, switchware power supply kit we've got from days of old have power factors all over the place so you're causing all that current to flow in the mains up to the power station and the substation the transformers and you're not actually using any of that power you're just circulating a current through but your meter does not measure that portion of the current which is not in phase with the volt but most of the smart meters these days they can send it a message and switch it over to KVA from uh, kilowatt hours to KW uh, kilowatt hours into KVA in which case we'll all be paying more for our electricity but we won't get any more power we will just pay for the losses that we're causing in the wiring to the power station right so all right let's take that out there so I hope you found that interesting um, it's a bit of a ramble a bit long-winded but if it's stuff you won't worry about then um, then you know so if you just uh, subscribe to the pointer down there